so if you ever wanted to make a custom arch linux installer there is a way you can do it so it's called arch iso so it's a package available in arch standard repos so you can install them by using sudo pacman s arch iso so if you do that it's going to download and install arch iso so here inside the arch wiki it will give you general recommendations and how you can configure this and you can create your own bootable iso like you can burn it to a disk or you can use dd to use uh, it to a usb drive or something and you can use that to install your arch linux so i will put a link to the wiki in the description so i'm not uh, currently i'm not going to like read through that because i know how to like perform this i have done this like a couple of times besides i have like i'm using this mostly to spin up like uh, if i'm planning to do a reinstallation i'm i will build one iso myself rather than i go and download one from arch to get the latest one so it's relatively easy to make an arch iso so you have to come back to the wiki sometime because if you are watching this video on a later time sometime the process may vary so you have to be careful while you are doing this so let's exit out of that so the main thing you are going to need is you need to create a directory so mkdir and you are going to create something called arch or something depending on your preference you can create a directory so after that we are going to copy sudo cp dash r so this is the path and we are going to copy that to inside arch so there are like two versions if uh, like if i open up another terminal like let me show you here itself so if i cd into slash user share and arch iso and inside arch iso you have a directory called configs and here if you do an ls you can see we have like two layouts so one is for baseline and another one is for relang uh, relang stands for release engineering so we are going to use this uh, we are going to use the relang version to make our own spin so i'm going to my home directory and uh, cd like uh, sudo cp you need to have uh, super user privileges so you're going to sudo cp recursively because you're going to have some directories inside so the user share arch iso config relang and you're going to give this asterisk so it's going to copy everything and you have to specify your build folder so mine is arch so you do it accordingly to your so if you do an enter it's like already copied so if i cd into arch and if i do an ls i can see all these things over here so the main thing you want to customize is probably some packages so you're going to use you need to have super user privileges for whatever you are doing over here so sudo near vim i'm going to use that so packages x64 like x8664 i'm going to open up that in my text editor so here you have the list of packages available so if you don't want something like amdu code you can delete that then if you need to add something over here you can add them over here like uh, if you open up um, let's add spectre window manager before that we can check the dependencies for spectre window manager so 
Arch Linux packages. So we can do a package search. So the fun thing about package search is if you search for a package over here like uh, Spectre Window Manager, if you click the package name, you can see the related dependencies over here. So you can add them over here. So we can like add that. Then we need our Xorg. So we are going to add Xorg for our display server. Then we need to have our display drivers. So XF86 dash video dash Intel. And if you are having an AMD GPU, you can use uh, XF86 dash video dash AMD GPU. Then if you are having NVIDIA, you can use XF86 video Novo, but I don't have that. Mm. I think that's pretty much it and if you need a browser like if you need to run through the wiki before like while you're installing you can install something like Firefox or you can have like uh, Chromium depending on your use case so is if we cd into airrootfs if we do NLS we can see slash etc and uh, like etc root and user directories so if you need something inside every like every user's home directory you can go to etc so cd etc if you do nls you don't have uh, like scale directory called scale so you can mkdir scale and you need to have super user privileges so do mkd make directory and scale and cd into skill and you can copy your home directory configuration files like uh, xnrc or something over here depending on your use case so that's that so it will be available for every user's home directory so let me cd back and if we do an ls you can see like uh, a mk init cpio and mk init cpio dot t so if we use our our text editor to open up the mk init cpio dot conf you have your hooks over here so if you are using some other hooks like if you need systemd then sdv console something like that you can edit your hooks accordingly so if you don't use uh, pxc or something you can remove them uh, depending on your use case you can set your kernel compression over here all these things so if you are using something like uh, instead of the standard linux kernel if you are using something like linux lts inside your installation you can cd into make init cpio.d and you have to use uh, your text editor have a preset so inside this one you have to edit like if you are using linux dash lts you have to make like linux dash lts over here and for uh, your init ram fs you have to do like dash linux um, sorry lts dash img so similarly for for hardened you have to replace the lts with uh, hardened so i'm going to quit out of that i'm not going to save that because we are using mainline kernel then you can add like custom user if you want for that you need to modify let's say password let's see shadow and you have to create a group shadow and it's a groups I presume but we are not going to do that over here we are just going to stick with the root for installing this one so if you need to install a custom kernel you have to like how to replace the uh, like there will be like Linux over here so you have to replace this with uh, Linux dash LTS for that if you want to use like LTS kernel or if you want to use hardened you can use that 
then if you want to use something like sun kernel you can use linux dash then accordingly but be careful while you are editing this you have to make changes in the preset for generating the initram fs file so after that you quit out of this you make necessary changes then i'm going to cd back and if i do like sudo mk arch iso and you have like two options like dash v for verbose and dash w for working directory and you have to specify your working directory so that is arch for me then you have to specify your output directory so for this case we are going to use arch then you have to specify your profile so arch so if you do that and hit enter um, you need to have a network connection before this because it's going to pull up all the packages from the internet and it's going to install them and build the iso so we are going to do that so now it's telling you all these packages are going to be downloaded and installed so this is going to like the build process is going to take some time um, maybe five minutes or ten minutes probably depending on your system so i will cut this portion and i'll be back when the installation is completed so the build process have been like completed so we can like uh, cd into our work directory and we can do an ls so here you can see like we have this arch linux iso so this is our newly created iso file so if you need to like write it to a usb or something if it's like sdc or something you can do like sudo dd and you can use if equals arch you can uh, like specify the iso name and you can specify the output file location equals slash dev slash sdc or something depending on your usb drive then you can do like bs equal one megabyte then status equals progress so if you do that it's going to like write this iso to a usb drive and create a bootable installation medium